just zoom in. All right, if you would please introduce yourself, welcome. Thank you, I'm Ron Denham. I'm the chair of the Water and Sanitation Rotarian Action Group of Rotary International, referred to colloquially as WASRAG. WASRAG is a group of roughly 1,500 Rotarians from the 1.3 million Rotarians around the world who are committed to water and sanitation and hygiene. Our interest started in the year 2005 when the president of Rotary at the time said, Denham, water, health and hunger are the major issues. Would you be prepared to lead this initiative? So that was the start. And from the very beginning, we said our vision is, first of all, to create awareness. Secondly, to get every Rotary club around the world engaged in some water project or other. And then maybe to initiate a pilot program showing what how Rotary in its collectivity could do within a country, a district or a watershed or something like that. Rotary clubs <laughs> over the years have been involved in many small projects. Um, there are over 5,000 projects even at the present time. There are 33,000 Rotary clubs. And these clubs really fall into two broad categories. There are the clubs in the developing world, such as here in Uganda, East Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, Asia, and so forth. And then there are the clubs in the high economy countries, Northern Europe, United States, North America, Australia, and so forth. And the roles complement each other. In these countries, the developing countries, we encourage the clubs to become involved at the local community, the community level, helping the community implement humanitarian projects and our focus obviously is towards water and sanitation but there are complementary humanitarian activities basic education and literacy health and disease prevention uh, even peace and conflict resolutions or various others as well our focus is water and sanitation initially as i say there were many projects taking place Values of maybe up to $300,000, but the majority would have had a total budget of maybe $25,000. And as I was going around the world visiting many of these projects, it became apparent a lot of money was being wasted. I would find pumps not functioning, lying on the ground. I would find toilets and latrines being used as garbage dumps. So this forces us to rethink and say, look, we're doing too much money at the front end, investing or giving money for these projects. We're not emphasizing the sustainability and all the behavioral training implications therein. So we've gradually been shifting our emphasis into that direction. This has meant a big shift among the donor group. Um, traditionally, Rotary Clubs in North America were driven often by supply uh, manufacturers of equipment and materials that have something to do with providing better water. Pump manufacturers, filter manufacturers, who would go to the local Rotary Club and say, aha, I have the solution for the world's water problems. You buy 50,000 of these things. We, the manufacturer, will ship them to the country and we'll assure you there will be safe water for the next umpteen years. Of course, it didn't happen. Um, and interestingly enough, Rotarians are leaders in the business and professional community, but many of us leave our brains at the office when we go to our Rotary Club meeting. And some of these well-intentioned promoters persuade them to part with money for these supply-driven initiatives which are failing. So our mandate right now, our mission I should say, in North America is to persuade Rotary Clubs to think of the demand. What is the need in the country where we're working and working back from that point rather than thinking of a manufacturer of a supply or a product and and we're making headway largely because one of the funders of rotary initiatives is the rotary foundation we're helping them change their guidelines but also through many speeches and presentations we're letting the donor community know that Stop thinking about giving equipment and materials from North America. Let's think of what you can do indigenously in the countries where the need is. Local habit, local customs, local materials can all be used to manufacture many of the things that are being made in North America. I'll give you a very simple example, biosand filters. Mm -hmm. um, they can be made out of plastic in Michigan and shipped by the US Navy to various parts of the world where they'll then be implemented. Alternatively, we can help a local manufacturer in Uganda, for example, to build a factory to manufacture 
these filters out of concrete. Uh, now they're heavy, but that is a plus because it means they won't get stolen. But then when they manufacture it, training the people how to use them, how to operate them. So not only are we helping provide safe water, we're creating employment and improving the well-being of the people in the country. That's just one example of how we shift our focus, the needy and this end of the demand end of the spectrum rather than the supply end of the chain. Thank you very much. Is that enough? It's fantastic. Okay. Thank you ever so much.